Learn how to create fascinating face morphing effects with Comfy UI and Animate Div. Create this simple trick in Stable Diffusion. Let's get started. For this tutorial, you will need to download assets of this Civit AI page. The link is in the description. Copy them in the input folder of Comfy UI. On the right you can see the different attachments. In the photos file there are the photos that are being used for the morphing. There are two zip files with the original frames that are used to create the masks. They are in two files because I could not upload them in one. Unzip and place them in one subfolder. In DW pose you will have the skeletons to be used in one of the control nets. So we depth maps will be used in a second one. The workflow from the tutorial is based in the Hotshot XL guide by Inner Reflections. With this workflow, we make animations which use stable diffusion XL models. In the Civit AI page there are more instructions on how to use it. You can see the different requirements. This workflow uses the IP adapter and frame interpolation, for example. You will need the Hotshot XL motion model, which is also indicated in the link. I will also leave a link in the description. There are two models available. You can use any of the two, but for this tutorial we will use the F16 model. Download and copy it in the models folders of Animate Diff Evolve custom node. And of course, in the Civit AI page I also leave a copy of the workflow. You can use it to follow this tutorial or adapt it as you want. After dragging the workflow and dropping it in Comfy UI, you should be able to see the workflow. In case you have a message error and a lot of the nodes in red, use the Install Missing Nodes feature. You can do it by accessing the manager in the menu of Comfy UI. Now, let's jump to the morphing animation workflow and see how it works. In the first module, we are going to load the different models. In this group, we also have the Animate Diff node. We are going to use a stock video. We will load the frames which we need to create the masks later. The animation, in this case, is guided with the prompt and the control net modules. With these nodes, and the animate diff node, basically create the animation. And what do we need to do for morphing the face? The first thing is to create a mask of the face for every frame that is processed. We want that the animation is applied only to the face. We do not want the rest of the body and the background to be changed. That is why it is applied to the latent. And to guide the style we use the IP adapter with an attention mask. For this reason the mask is connected to the IP adapter. The morphing effect is created with the face morphing group. For this tutorial, we are going to use three reference images. The new fold batches functionality in IP adapter allows a different reference image for each animation frame concatenating as many images as frames and doing interpolation in the transition frames, we can create the morphing effect. This way, the IP adapter can do what we want. Let's see in more detail how every node works. First, let's bypass some of the groups for the demonstration. We are not going to need to do the upscaling. For the moment, we will not do the face morphing, so we bypass this and the masking nodes group. Looking at the first module, what do we have? First is the VAE. We are going to use the base SDXL VAE. In this module we also have the original frames that are being used later for face masking. These images also define the size of the latent. In the case that the images are very large, we may want to make them smaller. We can use, for example, an image scale node. The checkpoint we use is the base model of SDXL, but of course you can use any other SDXL model you like. This workflow uses the Hotshot XL motion model and animate diff. Therefore, we also need to use the Hotshot XL beta scheduler. In uniform context options, in principle we are not going to change anything. Hotshot XL works with a maximum of 8 frames, so we keep them. The rest too. In the prompt we use the clip text and code SDXL. In the positive we need to write a prompt which describes the animation. In the negative we just indicate we do not want bad quality and worse quality. Now in the control nets. First, we are going to guide the animation with an open pose control net. We have already prepared the frames using DW pose. We have generated the frames of the skeleton of the whole body, hands and face. But we are mostly interested in the face. In addition we are using Zoe depth maps. I do not think these are needed for the morphing effect but normally work nicely with animate diff. Keep in mind that the control nets must be the SDXL because we use SDXL checkpoints. 
These two modules should be enough to run the workflow. Let's try without the IP adapter and see what happens. Let's bypass the saving images and for this small test, set the cap at 16. This is two rounds of animate diff steps. Without the mask and without the IP adapter, an animation with a singer is created. We can see the control nets work, the hand, also the face, the shape of the mouth. The workflow seems to be okay. Let's now apply the style with IP adapter. We activate the group. For IP adapter we need to use clip vision. We need to use the right 1.4 SDXL checkpoint. Use the IP adapter plus SDXL VITH model. Clip Vision SD 1.5 is good. However, depending on the model, you have to use another. The attention mask is connected, but will not yet work because the mask node is not active. What we are going to do is to include a reference image. Let's use the first image. Let's activate only the first image for the IP adapter. We do not need, now, to repeat 39 times the batch. We will need it later for face morphing. Let's use one as we do normally with an IP adapter. The unfold batch option we could set it as false too, but we keep it as true because we will use it later. Let's run it and see how it looks with just one image. With IP adapter, we see that the frames take our style. In this case a scary lady. But as you see, the background is also animated. Without the mask, the sampler takes all the information from the reference image and applies it all over. Therefore, what we have to do is to apply the mask. First, we activate the group of face masks. We want to detect the face. For that we use the simple detector segs. We use the ultralytic detector using the B-Box face model. The segmentation model is B, is OK. The segments we then convert into mask using the segs to mask node. With automatic detection, you have to play a little with the levels to get what you want. In this case, in the background of another person. If we use it with the standard values, it will also detect this face here. But we are only interested in the face of the singer. In this case, we increase the threshold to 0.85. We have also increased the B-Box dilation. And the rest we leave the standard values. We want to expand and blur the face mask a little bit. This way the edges are not so sharp, as we see here. We do this expanding the mask by 20, applying a blur radius of 10 and increasing the sigma to 1.7. With the simple detector we are creating a shape as well. And we need to place it over the frame. So we need to have a black reference frame. To do this, first we take the dimensions of the original frames. And create a solid mask with these dimensions. Their mask is black, so this value has to be 0. If we have one, it will be completely white. But because it is the background, it is zero. We then need to put together both masks. We use the mask composite node. The destination is the solid mask. The source is the mask that corresponds to the face. Of the different options, select the one that is add. The composited mask we use for both the IP adapter and also on the latent. What we do with this is that the animation is only applied to the mask area. The face in this case. So the rest is not affected by the rendering. The background and the body will be the same as in the initial photo. Let's see how it looks. You can see that the mask is applied to the part of the face. And the rest of the image remains intact. Now we are going to create the morphing effect. For that we have created this module. To do a short demonstration, we are going to take only two of the modules. We connect them to our IP adapter. The amount of repetitions in the batch depends on the total frames of the original video. In our case we have 133, but we have 16 cap. So for this test we are going to put here 6. Here we are going to put 4 or 5. We do 4. And we are doing another 6. I think more or less 16. In this quick example it does it very quickly. It morphs from the first to the second image. Obviously it will be much better when we do more frames. We are going to do all our initial images. 
In this case we are going to put to our third image and activate the rest of the nodes. Let's also use the original values of the example. Here it is a multiplier of 7, 39 times, total of 133 frames. To render the whole animation now, the only thing we have to do is put our cap to zero, so that we process all the images. And we go for it. Here you can see it. I think it looks pretty good. All the 133 masks, corresponding to each of the frames the reference image has been taken, and applied with the face morphing, first reference image, and then to the robot, and finally to the woman with emeralds. For the video, we are not going to upscale it, but we have run it before. So you can see how the original image is compared to the original video, the animation that we have created with our face morphing. And well, this is Al. I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. If you want to know more about Stable Diffusion, Comfy UI and how to make animations, look at my other tutorials. Thanks.